This is a production of PBS Charlotte. This weekend off the record, Mecklenburg County says we need a tax increase. Charlotte says we don't. And what exactly is the double whammy? We'll talk about it. Charlotte police telling us what witnesses told them about the shooting at UNCC. Were some of the victims targeted? CMPD also changing the way they release body cam video and how much they release after a police shooting last month. Republicans running for Congress get one last chance to debate before next week's primary and a warning from the Panthers owner to South Carolina. If you don't want us, fine. We'll just stay here in Charlotte. Looks like it worked. Off the record is next on PBS Charlotte. Hi, I'm Jeff Sonier. This is Off the Record, where we talk about the stories you've been talking about this week. And if you watch the news, read the news, or listen to the news, you'll recognize the names and faces around our table. Dedrick Russell from WBTV and Mark Becker from WSOC. Thanks for joining us. Also, Eli Portillo from the UNC Charlotte Urban Institute and Ashley Fahey from the Charlotte Business Journal. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us at home as well. You can join our conversation. Just email your questions and comments to off the record at WTVI.org. Well, taxes, um, it depends on who you talk to, I guess, this week on whether or not we need a higher tax rate or we don't. The city announced what their proposed budget looks like for the upcoming year, and we heard from voters, uh, citizens, about the county's recommended uh, budget this week as well. Um, Ashley, can we start with you a little bit about what the what the reaction was from taxpayers, citizens, whomever, who showed up at the public hearing last night? Certainly, um, there's a mix, of course. Many that I've talked to who work sort of in the real estate industry, who represent a lot of landlords, um, the Greater Charlotte Apartment Association, um, Real Estate Building Industry Coalition. Um, many of them, of course, are very much against this right. increased revenue neutral um, or beyond revenue neutral rate. Um, you know, a woman from the GCAA did mention that, um, say a, a property sees a, a significant increase, of course, in property value. Um, a renter who's paying $825 a month now mm -hmm. could be paying $100 more if right. we have this rate. And that's obviously significant. $825 per month is pretty low for Charlotte. Um, so you would imagine that would impact a lot of lower income renters. In particular. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Um, but then again, you know, there's others that sort of think, you know, this is the, these are the priorities we need to fund. These are the, the these, are, these are the things we need to be putting money behind. So, Definitely across the board, I would say people who are in, you know, sort of any commercial property definitely are very yeah. concerned because um, their rates are going to go up exponentially, way even higher than um, home, homeowners. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of opinions out there. Yeah, we, we kind of talked about it last week, and, and I guess the question I raised then and, and we didn't have an answer to yet was, are the low-income families who are most impacted maybe by a tax increase but also most uh, benefited by these programs that the, the higher taxes would pay for. Have we seen which way those groups are breaking yet in terms of support for the county or perhaps opposing the county for, for their tax increase? Um, like I said, I think yeah. it's still it's still early and still people are processing. Um, there's definitely support for both ends, but um, you know, again, okay. from from my perspective, everyone that I've talked to has been fairly against it. I would say um, just because it will impact, I would say, the most vulnerable neighborhoods, particularly yeah. in the North End and West Charlotte. Yeah. Yeah, but it was very interesting. I talked to County Commission Chair George Dunlap. I guess around 60 people. Um, approached and talked about the budget last night, right. and out of the 60, only about three said, um, you know, we were against this tax increase. Hmm. And most of the people, some of the people said that you could do more. So it was, um, so we were talking wow. about, you know, how many people would come out and say, no, do not increase my taxes. But some people last night said that we can do more. And so now the county is going to go back and deliberate and just to take exactly what those 50 some people who may have said can do more. And, you know, maybe we'll, we get a higher increase to do more. Well, I think um, one thing <coughs> that is happening now is um, you're getting a lot of groups coming out and advocating for more revenue for their specific programs. Right. Uh, parks advocates have been very strong in advocating 
for more funding for parks. Uh, there were county employees at the hearing yesterday who uh, came out in favor of this proposed 5% across the board pay increase that the county says it needs to be competitive. And, uh, you know, there's a, definitely a feeling among some people in uh, gov local government that they could do more. Uh, the city has proposed a revenue neutral rate, and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Julie Isolt at a hearing this week said that she actually thinks that the city should look possibly at a higher mm. rate. Um, she said that, you know, I think that I'm looking at my tax bill and I could pay more. She said we could fund things like our transportation priorities and programs to help lower income people. So I think that uh, these rates are not set in stone yet and right. uh, we could actually see higher rates. Um, and regardless of the rates, a lot of people are going to see higher taxes because of the impact of the reval. I think that's something that hasn't really uh, sunk into the public yet. That's the double whammy. Right. That's the, <laughs> yes. we were waiting for that's the double whammy that the city manager was talking about when he proposed a no uh, tax increase budget, that if you raise taxes the same year that values have gone up so much, that's the double whammy that really, you know, sticks people, the people that can't afford it the most. Yeah, and I think there's an education there, too. You know, I think when you hear it black and white, the taxes are going up. Okay, well, you might think, well, that's a slight increase, but knowing what your property value went up, if you're a renter whose property value went up 200%, I mean, that will impact you no matter what. So, whether you're revenue neutral, whether you're seeing an increase above revenue mm -hmm. neutral, so um, there's almost a little bit of an education there where I don't know that every citizen here in Mecklenburg and Charlotte knows exactly how much they're going to see an increase. Yeah, I think a lot of people assume revenue neutral means tax neutral, but right. for most owners, a lot of owners, that won't be the case. Right. Um, you know, I did some math, and I think I did this right. So someone whose property is valued at $100,000 had about a $1,300 tax bill last year. This year, under the proposed city-county rate, if their property doubled to $200,000, mm -hmm. which happened in a lot of lower-income right. neighborhoods, their tax bill would be about $1,800. So even though the overall rate is lower, that hypothetical person in the $100,000 house that doubled is still going to see about a 50% jump in their tax bill. Which is a killer. Where is that house? Because there aren't many, uh, <laughs> right? I mean, the fact is we're talking about a much bigger scale, too. And it, it is amazing, though, that, that you're looking at the, 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 the city's budget. There's still a lot of candy in that budget. There, there's increases, there's salary increases. Um, Police getting more money, a lot of things being mm -hmm. done, and they're saying yeah. this. A lot of the same things the county is proposing right. that they say they need more for. The, this the city is managing, man, managing to do it without that. Well, yeah. even with a revenue neutral budget, I think the city is still able to apply about 4% growth to the revenue they're collecting, because mm -hmm. even under a revenue neutral budget, they're allowed to account for inflation mm -hmm. and other factors that increase costs. So the city will be collecting more money even under a revenue neutral budget. But that gets back to what do you cut? You know, CMPD needs to hire more officers. Right. They found uh, that their pay lags competitor departments in uh, peer cities. Mecklenburg County needs to hire more detention officers and more sheriff's deputies. Uh, low income renters are asking for more subsidies and the groups uh, are asking for more for parks. So mm -hmm. if you're going to have a more bare bones budget, where do you cut? All of these programs have uh, pretty popular constituencies. And that is a concern for some city leaders. They're saying that we look at our budget and is it just vanilla? Mm -hmm. You know, or is this budget setting us up for the future? So therefore, that's why they were saying that, you know, is there any money there for transportation? Because if we want to be a growing city and attract people, then our budget needs to reflect that we're going to put our money where our mouth and is so that we can get that return yeah. on our investment. Right. Yeah, and even CMS, they wanted $70 million from the county, and, and they right. said, well, well, we're working with $50 million right now, but of course, they're still deliberating, and we'll have to see if anything We'll see, because if you there. raise it one penny, that, that that's an extra $18 million mm -hmm. by one right. penny. And it'll be very interesting, because this county commission is all Democrat, and it hasn't been like that right. since like the 60s or something like that. So it'll be good. You don't have your pockets. You don't have your yeah. Bill James, you know, with the pushback. Well, it so we will on your see de definition of good, I yeah, suppose. Exactly. <laughs> so, right, exactly. So we will see, you know, <laughs> careful, <laughs> yeah. easy, easy, yeah, easy. Yeah. So it'll, it'll just be interesting with the all Democrat board that how far will right. they go. Right. To me, that's what's remarkable. I mean, I've sat through my share of budget hearings over the years, you know, uh, to have out of 60 people, only three say, don't raise my taxes. The other one's saying, attaboy, county commission, thank you for this. To have people coming to the county commission, instead of saying, don't cut me, saying, where is mine, or can we also be included? I mean, this is just, it's 180 degrees from how it used to be when it came to budget time. It was always, how do we keep from raising taxes? And I really, you know, I mean, I, 
I say this a lot every time we talk about this, it, it's, it's almost like a, a sea change politically that's allowing mm -hmm. um, elected officials to do what they were never allowed to do for, you know, for decades in Charlotte and Mecklenburg, and that's raise taxes without a really, really good reason. With you know. apologies to Jimmy Walker, or Jay, with it be, uh, um, you know, we're in good times, right? I mean, <laughs> Donald the, Knight. there you go. Uh, I mean, no, we, we really are in a, in a, in a, uh, you know, a bull market here. Uh, I think, and and so the trick is, you know, there there there's positive growth, and again, that's a much better problem <coughs> than sitting here talking about how we're going to yeah. cut and and so forth. Right. Having said that, you can't go overboard, and I think that's one of the things that the county the is going to really have to work on. You know, and the perception, whether it's reality or not, that that an all democratic. Uh, Mecklenburg County Commission is just going to, you know, be the quote tax and spend right. uh, uh, liberals. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've got to be aware of that. They've got to be fiscally responsible. So yeah. it is, a, yeah. You, you know, we, th these are problems, yeah. but they're good yeah. problems to have. And right. both budgets really bu also talk right. about a lot of things like affordable housing. I mean, that's yeah. up there front mm -hmm. center and. and and the, the education. They're right. not going to get their 70 million, but 50 million would be. So they, they, you know. yeah, yeah, it has to be a balance because here you have, you have the city and the county who paid all of this money for reports and studies that say that, hey, we need more money mm -hmm. so we can have universal pre-K. Hey, right. we need this, right. we need this, we need this. So you can't pay for a report mm -hmm. and then the report gives you like 20 or 30 recommendations and you act on none of it. So you have to find that balance where, you mm -hmm. know, where we all we know that there's a problem, yeah. but now we have to do the solution that we paid people to tell us what the problem so was. So it's not just Jimmy Walker, good times, <laughs> Dynamite, it's also George Jefferson moving on up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, all right, that's the, you're going over the millennials' heads here on this side of the table. Same time next week, same time, same place next <laughs> week. <laughs> 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 they're a retro also blast from the past right there, so yeah. Um, uh, the, uh, we'll have more to talk about as the tax season moves on in the next couple of weeks or about a month or so is when all these decisions will be finalized. So um, this is the beginning. We'll, we'll talk more later about this, I suppose. You know, we, we also talked last week about the shooting at UNC Charlotte. And, uh, you know, it's again, it's, uh, it's never, it doesn't get easier, but, uh, you know, it, we're kind of finding out more about what was on the mind, perhaps, of the accused shooter, and we're also you know, seeing the uh, the memorial services and the funerals now. Let's let's talk a little bit about what we heard from court this week regarding, you know, the uh, the, the the suspect of this particular case. Yeah, there case. was a there, there was a search warrant that police served, and we knew they served that search warrant within hours of, of the shooting at, at his apartment in Noda. And of course, you have to have probable cause to say why 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 you're going to search. And in that probable cause affidavit, uh, they said they talked to a witness who who said that um, the shooter. Uh, went in uh, apparently targeting one table, uh, mm. opened the door to the classroom and went into, apparently there were tables, not desks per se, in that classroom, and went with intention toward one of those tables and, and started to shoot. Um, now, you know, may maybe that's just the way he did, right? We don't still know what was in his mind. Was it us at the table he was after? Or was he just picked one and went after yeah. it? I mean, it, there's still a few blanks there, but that was certainly enlightening. The other thing that I thought was interesting about that document was that it, when they went to his apartment and searched, they found magazines, that is to say, mm -hmm. bullet magazines. Yeah, clips. Uh, clips, yeah. right, uh, and ammunition and paper targets, all of which suggest that this, you know, wasn't a spur of the moment thing. He'd been practicing, yeah. and again, we go back to these bad, oh, sorry uh, cliches, but he put on what we could call the uniform, mm -hmm. all black, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, this was a very intentional, planned attack. The other thing, too, for folks who wondered, could it have been worse? He had six clips in his leather bag, according to the affidavits, according to what uh, police found, so that's a, a lot of ammunition that could have been used that wasn't used, thank, you know, thankfully, because of the heroism of you know the victims in this case, the police who disarmed him, the you know the victim who challenged him in the yeah. classroom and all that. I, so, I yeah. have heard that he, and, and again, this is not something I was privy to certainly, but I, I've heard that he told investigators that yes, that kid stopped me, hmm. um, and and uh, you know at the same time I've heard that the the young woman who who survived may have actually said something to him like why why you know why are you shooting what you know why don't you stop and he, he said something along the lines of I'm done. 
I mean, it's just a, oh, of course, yeah, yeah. aberrant behavior, mm -hmm. sad and tragic. And well, know. and that does reinforce Riley Howell's heroism and everyone in that classrooms because, you know, with that affidavit, when I read it, I was, you know, surprised to see he had a high quality handgun, multiple clips of ammunition, mm -hmm. and, you know, the model of handgun he had a Glock can typically hold 15 to 20 rounds um, in a magazine, depending on the size. As yeah. terrible as it was, this could have been even worse. Mm. Right. Sure. Graduation's coming, and uh, obviously we'll be thinking a lot about what happened on campus and the folks who were affected by it most, you know, as, as we, we move towards uh, graduation week at UNC Charlotte. Uh, police also this week um, talking about another case, the, the shooting involving one of their own officers and a change in policy in terms of transparency, how they how they respond to not just um, investigators and, and prosecutors trying to, you know, to decide whether these are chargeable offenses, but also how they respond to the public who wants to see more of what happened and wants to see it quickly and not, you know, months or in some cases years after the fact. This policy of releasing more right. video, Mark? Right. Initially, or you recall in this case, in that shooting of Danquers Franklin up at the Burger King on Beatty's Ford Road, uh, media asked for uh, the, the events leading up to the body camera video from the moment, the event mo minutes leading up to and then shortly after the, the, the shooting, because that was essentially yeah. uh, it, right? And police did that, about two and a half minutes of video. Well, um, then city council, we, we learned, had watched all 11 minutes, because there was a lot that happened after that was said, right. uh, after the shooting, or, and done or not done, as in render aid to Mr. Franklin. Um, and so that then was released, and and the judge chided the police department for uh, you know apparently you know trying to withhold some stuff. So now CMPD is going to preempt that, and again perception I think is huge here. We're not uh, we're not going to hide anything is what they're they're saying. So from the get go, we're going to just hand over all uh, the video to the judge in this to case, and let the judge let determine the judge what gets right. released and what doesn't. Yeah. But again, the perception of being less than transparent is is a bigger problem to them than what we used to hear all the time, and still do sometimes hear. And that's that if you release this stuff, it will make it difficult, yeah. if not impossible, to conduct a fair trial. Mm -hmm. Compromises our investigation, right. all that sort that, of thing. Up until the officer involved shooting involving um, um, Officer Randall West Carrick and Jonathan Farrell, mm -hmm. where there wasn't body cam video, that did lead to body cam video, but there was dash cam video. And that video was not released for almost two years hmm. till the case went to trial, and it was a huge issue. Let's see the dash cam video. And in the end, it did come out in the trial, which is the way it used to be. All that's changed. Yeah. The world is mm -hmm. shifted. Now. The other thing I heard uh, in the release of the video, uh, the police spokesman said there were, I, I, just, I, had, I read this several times, there were 68 more videos of what happened on Beatty's Ford Road the day of that officer shooting. 68 different pieces of video, whether it came from uh, closed circuit television or mm -hmm. people with cell phones. I mean, welcome to the new world, folks. I mean, everything is on video somewhere. And, right. Uh, you know, right. It's, it's, it, it, it complicates even more these cases of what do you release, what don't you release, what do the people already see from their own videos, and, and, and how does that compare to what, you know, these other cameras show. So I guess, uh, you know, this is, this is new territory for everybody. And, um, I mean, just yeah. technically dealing with that stuff, right, is, is yeah. a lot. Um, can you imagine watching 68 different <laughs> videos? and? And in the end, too, I, you know, the chief has said it, and, and it's true. Don't take even a, a video in isolation, because that video is turned on and right. turned off at some point, and there's stuff that happens around the edges on both sides. None of that video probably shows what happened w before police got the call out there, this Mr. Franklin apparently in the Burger King threatening people with a gun. Mm. Um, so. Well, it, it, it's important that you look at all of the video because here we have that Chris Franklin he cannot speak for himself right and he cannot justify his cause but so yeah. those cameras are his witnesses but yeah. it's so interesting to me that how you have to have a policy to <laughs> do what you said you were going to do you said you were going to be transparent mm -hmm. so if I'm going to be transparent I'm going to give you everything to I'm going to put all my cards on the table I do not release two minutes of an 11 yeah. minute video and then I have to come back and say, oh, we're going to have a yeah. policy to transfer. It's just it's uh, lesson it's, learned. Yeah, yeah exactly. Case, yeah. exactly. And learned. it should have been a lesson mm -hmm. learned 
from all of these other events right. that we've had yeah. that they should have just, you know, in my mind, yeah. should have said, okay, then, you know, we've been down this road before. I'm going to release yeah. everything we got, you know right. what I mean? If we want to, yeah. if we're serious about having a good right. foster, a good relationship between mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and police. Mm -hmm. Well, a couple of other stories this week I want to touch on. Uh, Panthers get their first win. Season hadn't started yet, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's uh, Panthers won, South Carolina legislature nothing. In particular, uh, that, you know, after all the complaints about are we giving away the store to the Panthers, uh, David Tepper says, if you don't give it to us, we won't come. And I think that was enough to persuade some of those folks on the fence. Um, so yeah. Panthers got what they were looking yeah, for. Yeah, big week. Yeah, yeah, I know this was a very dramatic week in Columbia. Um, <laughs> but they finally, yes, they passed the incentives yesterday in the state, uh, South Carolina State ha uh, Senate. And, um, you know, it looks like the, the facility might be moving there by 2022, um, mm. maybe 2021. Um, $200 million investment, 150 jobs. But, you know, the whole thing this week was, you know, is it worth it? There was a much debate about it. Um, even one state senator was saying, well, can you bring two, two games? to South Carolina <laughs> and that of course didn't pass no. but yeah. um, you know the whole thing though is that you know and I think sometimes this gets lost in the conversation um, the games will still be played in Charlotte right. you know the, the um, stadium still going to be in Charlotte um, this is the practice facility and many NFL teams across the country have done this sort of structure before and um, again touting the benefits of sort of the ancillary development I think Atrium Health wants to do a facility and whatever yeah. else may come of this I, again Senator Dick Harput and from um, Columbia, who was the leading opponent of this, and also my favorite name in politics of all time. <laughs> um, you know, he said, you know, he said, uh, those numbers are inflated. It's not going to be $3 billion right. in impact. It's going to be only $1.2 billion in impact, which is still $1.2 well, billion dollars with a B. And that's what the yeah, people exactly. said. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It's like if you're, if you're saying no because it's... 115 versus yeah. 1.2 billion. Right. Yeah. I, I, never, I never saw the... I never understood the argument that 1.2 billion wasn't enough, you know, right. to, to do this. Yeah. But it, when, when all is said and done, um, I thought it was a, a nice piece of gamesmanship by uh, owner Tepper, not just to, to challenge the legislature at the end there, but also to kind of, you know, beat North Carolina to the punch and have it. I mean, obviously he's got a guy, he had a game plan going into this and mm -hmm. uh, mission accomplished from his point of view. Speaking of game plans in the city of Charlotte's bullishness, how about if we just annex Rock Hill? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> now we got it back. Right? Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Um, Dick Harpulian, by the way, was born and raised in, in, in Union County, so mm -hmm. North Carolina. Uh, so yeah, he's from, the, I believe, the Waxhaw area or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So he, he actually is kind of a local, but he's long since moved there. But I mean, it makes sense for South Carolina. And I mean, they've done this over the years, right? They, they've been very eager to throw out. Aggressive, uh, yeah. Yeah, with yeah. Uh, the Boeing and, and the BMW and some mm -hmm. of these others. And, and North Carolina, for whatever reason, doesn't really have that same approach. Mm -hmm. We're doing okay, yeah. but South Carolina keeps getting those big, big. Well, you know, we'll have to see what goes on with the stadium because we know renovations or right. possibly even a new stadium at some point is mm -hmm. going to be part of the conversation. And certainly there's going to be conversations about incentives locally yeah. and, right. and maybe and didn't waste any time with the, their new advertisement saying, you know, we're um, one team in two states, yeah. so they've already put that out there. And David Tepper got what he wanted. He said that, hey, I'm the new owner, so yeah. if the new owner, I want some new stuff. I Every, want some yeah. bright, shiny stuff. I don't want, yeah. you know, the the, the, the bone. The, yeah. the bones are good yeah. at Bank yeah. of America State, but I want a new body. He is so, the richest uh, owner. Yeah. The, yeah, he's the richest owner in the NFL, and everyone's on notice now that he is a tough negotiator, and he knows what he wants, and... Um, in the case of South Carolina, he got what he wanted, so the stadium negotiations, whenever they may come, are going to be interesting as well from Charlotte and from North Carolina's point of view. Hey, Absolutely. a couple minutes left. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the 9th District race. We've got an election coming up uh, this coming Tuesday. We had the last uh, debate among all 10 Republicans running on the radio this week, and boy, we heard a little bit of everything in that debate, you know, talking about extramarital affairs and we're hearing about HB2 <laughs> again and uh, PAC money. Um, did, you, did anyone listen to the debate or the clips from it and, and what's your take on who stands where in this 10-person field with uh, just a couple of days to go? Well, <clears throat> it was interesting to me, um, I didn't attend the debate but listened to a lot of it, yeah. uh, how similar the Republican candidates sound right. on a lot of the issues. Yeah. You know, Gun everyone's control, kind of Trump, yeah. tripping I mean, just, over yeah, themselves exactly. to right. talk about how enthusiastic they are about guns, how enthusiastic they are about the Trump administration, mm -hmm. Uh, how pro-life they are. There's not a ton of policy differentiation. Right. They've really gone after each other more on 
you know, there have been attacks on um, folks who don't live in the district but live nearby. Mm -hmm. There have been attacks on candidate like uh, Lee Brown for taking uh, $1.3 million worth of spending from the Realtor PAC. Uh, mm -hmm. State Senator Dan Bishop was attacked for taking spending from the yeah. Club for Growth PAC, which has yeah. um, expressed some anti-Trump sentiment. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, who are you yeah. supported by, who's really supporting you. And I think at this point the front runner is Dan Bishop, according to the scant public polling we've seen. Right. But as it comes down to the wire, some of the candidates have their own internal polling. Mm -hmm. Matthew Ridenauer put out a poll yesterday that, that says he's puts ahead. him at 33%. <laughs> which conflicts a lot with the public <laughs> polling. And in a low turnout race like this, yeah. that can, you know, that can change a lot based on how you define a likely right. voter. Right. And yeah. But it's going to be interesting that with all of those candidates, at the end of the day, the winner has to have yeah. it at 30% plus yeah. one. Yeah. Of the, so, so it could be a runoff, you know yeah. what I mean? So it, it'll be interesting. So I guess there's a poll with Dan Bishop and then Stoney yeah. Rushing are, you know. In the public yeah. polling, they've been one right. and yeah. two. But right. Lee yeah. Brown's commercials are everywhere. I mean, she yeah. is on the air all the time. So this is going to be an interesting experiment on traditional advertising, you know, with a, with a budget versus mm -hmm. the kind of online stuff that some of the other candidates are doing and the, the, the mail stuff that I can't get. I, the, my mailbox is full every day with stuff from candidates mm -hmm. in this race. I'm, I guess I live in the right or the wrong place, depending on how you look <laughs> at it. I think uh, but, uh, Dan wow, Bishop's be been on the air as well. Uh -huh. um, yeah, he said a lot of Lee, Lee Brown, um, I think, was at 6% in, in the public yeah. poll that I've seen. So. Mm -hmm that ad spending has not apparently boosted yeah. her very much. Well, we'll find out Tuesday all the polls that, you know, the polls that show each candidate who put the poll together in the lead, we'll find out whose <laughs> polls are right and whose are wrong. And again, getting past 30% is the key for a lot of these mm -hmm. Republicans. They do right. not want a second race. And um, then we move on to Dan McCready, I suppose. It was almost two years ago, uh, th it was two years ago this month that Dan McCready announced he was running. So he's been the running for two years. Doesn't end, two years. Right? The race doesn't end, And he still has to cross the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> it's the long hey, race. Hey, we're at the finish line. Thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, great discussion, as always. Thank you for joining us at home. If you want to uh, add your own comments, send them to off the record at WTVI.org. And uh, we'll see you next time right here at uh, Off the Record. Thanks. A production of PBS Charlotte.